Dr. Chappell, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to transform data frames using dplyr. This video was made for Bio47, which is Introduction to Research in Ecology and Evolution, and it's modified from a presentation that was given by Tenneth Tay um, then from the class at Stanford Stat32 um, that I took in fall of 2017. So why do we need to transform data? Well, very rarely do we get data in the form that we need. Sometimes we need to create new variables or summaries. For example, in our case, taking the raw temperature data to create the average or the range. We also might need to rename or reorder variables, such as factoring categorical variables. And the easiest way to do this and more is to use the dplyr package in the tidyverse. I'm going to be teaching you four basic dplyr verbs in this video, but of course there's a lot more. The four that I'll be teaching are select, which allows you to pick variables by column names, for example, grabbing nectar sugar chemistry columns from the MIM data data frame. Mutate, which allows you to create new columns from old ones, such as adding up the total nectar sugars or log transforming CFU data. Arrange, which reorders the rows, for example, reordering flowers by most to least nectar. And filtering, which allows you to pick a subset of roles, for example, picking data from exposed flowers only. Now the R Markdown file that I'll be using, you'll have access to, so you can try it out later and copy the code on your own in case this video goes a little quickly for you to follow in real time. Now the last thing that I want to mention is that there's cheat sheets for uh, dplyr and tidy R and data and, and data wrangling, we really like to call it colloquially data wrangling. And these cheat sheets also have information on merging data frames. Now I don't think you'll need to merge data frames in this class um, because the R Shiny app should give you one data frame that has the data that you need. However, if you do find yourself needing to reshape data, for example, with the um, observational data, that, or I'm sorry, the experimental data that we have, um, there's more information here. And of course, we're always available at office hours. So I'm just going to switch over to uh, back to our studio. Let's see here. So just to remind you what we're doing, I'm going to open that R project. I'm just going to make this full screen now. And this is the R project for our class. And this is the R markdown file that I was speaking about. So you can watch the video about R Markdown later, but I'm just going to walk you through setting up. So first you'll need to install the tidyverse packages. So that's what these two lines do, install packages tidyverse. And then I'm going to use a, uh, another package later um, in the uh, visualization, data visualization video called Calplot. So you want to run these. Um, I just keep these uh, hashtags here because you only have to install them once. So I just like to keep them um, commented out. Again, this is not of a chunk, so this is code that will be run. So you'll need to install the tidyverse packages and calplot. Then you'll need to load the packages we'll be using. So we'll be using read R to read in CSV data. We'll be using dplyr uh, for reorganization uh, and data, what we call data wrangling. We're going to use ggplot2 for visualizations and calplot uh, for faceting plots, which I'll explain later. So I'm going to run this line here. Load all the packages and you can see the output is here in the R Markdown file. I like to load all the packages at the beginning of my R Markdown file or even just if I'm just do doing a regular R script at the beginning of my script so I can run them all at the same time. Um, we need to load the data so I'm going to be reading in two data frames here. I'm going to read in the JR Nectar Data 2020 or 2012 CSV file which I'm going to call MIM data which is exactly like examples.r. You can head it so um, you can see this is the head for that and that looks very familiar. I can load the plant. I'm also going to load some plant level data to show you how to do some summaries of temperature. Um, so I'm going to read in that CSV and call it plant data and then head that data and you can see that data frame is here. You can see how convenient it is in our markdown file to have the output directly next to the code. And now I'm going to walk you through a couple of these data transformations. So this is just uh, recapitulating what I already told you. Um, but before we do dive into the functions, I need to introduce you to the pipe operator. So this is the pipe operator. You can see it in code here. And essentially what it does, it sends everything from the thing before it to the thing after it. So for example, this uh, data pipe summarize would tell R to take the data and then use that as the input to the summarize function. So let me give you an example with the function select. So what select does is it picks a subset of columns by name. So for example, if we have our MIM data, and I'm just going to show you MIM data up here, if I wanted to just select these three columns, fructose, 
um, mix per mil, glucose mix per mil, sucrose mix per mil, and put it into a new data frame that's just sugars, I can do that using select. So what I'm doing here is I say, okay, take the mim data frame and pipe it to the select function. And the columns I want to select are fructose, glucose, sucrose. So, and take all of this and store it in the new object sugars. So if I run just that line, and I did that by just hitting command enter, now you can see over here in my global environment, I have um, this thing called sugars. Let's see here, where is my, oops, my, uh, there you go. I lost my pointer there for a second. I can go over here to sugars and you can see sugars is a data frame that has just three columns, which are the three columns I selected. And this line, head sugars, it just shows me the first six lines of that data frame. All right, the next function is mutate. So mutate creates new columns based on old columns. So for example, if we wanted to know the total number of sugar per sample in mix per mil, we could create a column of total sugars mix per mil, this column name, in this new sugars data frame by adding together the three columns. So what I can do is I can create a new column by saying take the sugars data frame, which you just made, and then mutate, create a new column called total sugar mix per mil, and then that is what adding what's in fructose, glucose, and sucrose across every single row. So what I did was it would, for example, add, well, it would ignore the NAs. It would add this, this, and this, and put it in that sum into a new column here called total sugars. So, and what this is doing is it's actually saving over the old sugars with a new, with this new output. So it's actually going to write over the old sugars data frame into a new one. And then again, it just, I'm just asking it to give me the head of that. So you can see that this is what we just looked at. It just added these three things into a new column that it created in the sugars data frame, total sugars make per mil. And if I just look at the sugars data frame, you can see there's a new column there that wasn't there, which is the sum of these three columns. This is also quite useful to log transform. So this is another way to log transform that bacterial CFU data. So back in MIM data, I'm just going to close this. Back in MIM data, remember we've got fungal CFU per microliter and bacterial CFU per microliter. And remember, we log transform the bacterial CFU per microliter to uh, make it more normal, right? So we could use parametric statistical approaches. So what you can use is, mim is the mutate function to create a new log bacterial CFU per microliter column, which is the log base 10 of the bacterial CFU per microliter plus one. So what this says is it says take in mim data, create a new column in mim data called this, and give it this, and save over mim data so you have this new one so if i run this you can see that at the end of mim data you've got a new column called log bacterial cfu per microliter and it is that log transform data so just to show you that again look there's log bacterial cfu per microliter and that's the log transform data from the original now number three function number three is a range now a range reorders rows you don't oftentimes have to do this, but sometimes it's useful if you just want to like kind of scroll through the data and see what's going on. So for example, if I wanted to reorder the rows based on flowers with the lowest to highest nectar volume, I could do that by saying, send in mim data, take, take mim data, send it to the function arrange, and arrange the nectar microliter column. <laughs> Excuse me. And then save over mim data. So if I run that, what you can see is if I go to nectar microliter, and all the zeros are first. And so just looking at MIM data again, now you can see it's been reordered nectar microliter. So these are all the zeros, and then it goes, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then all the NAs at the end. Um, now you might have noticed that it goes from small to large. Maybe you want to do it large to small, so you can just put descending nectar microliters. So again, it's just like the order of operations. So anything inside the parentheses will happen first. So what it's saying is take nectar microliters, do the ascending, and then arrange it. And so this will give me the exact opposite. So if I look back at mem data here, now you can see it starts from being big, 10 microliters, all the way to being small, and it still puts the NAs at the end. Now the last function I want to explain is filter. So filter picks columns based on values, and frankly, I think is one of the most um, useful functions in dplyr. 
So for example, if we only wanted flowers with open stigmas, we could filter the stigma column. Um, so what I mean by that is in MIM data, right, we've got stigma and we've got open and closed. So if I want to just get the observations that all have open, I can use filter to do that. So what this does is it says take MIM data and then filter for only the rows where stigma equals equals open. So note that the equals equals sign does not mean um, like defined to a new uh, variable. Like for example, up here we just had the one equal sign when it when we wanted to say, hey, make a new column called this that has this function applied to this um, to this column, bacterial CFP for microliter. Here it's the double equal sign, which is return of this is true. Okay. So what this is saying under the hood is it's saying look at each observation in stigma. If it's open, if it says open, then give it back to me and put it into this new data frame called open stigma. And if it doesn't, toss it out. So what you get is you get this data frame called open stigma. And you can see here, it's where all of the stigmas are open. So I can just show you here as well. So this data frame only has the open stigmas. This can also be really helpful because you can look over filter by multiple columns. So for example, if I wanted just the exposed flowers, I could filter observations where both bagged and caged were false. So again, in MIM data, remember, so we've got a column for bagged, caged, which is either one is if, if bagged is true and caged is false, and it means that this was a bagged flower, right? And vice versa. If, um, if this is false and this is true, it means that the flower was caged. And if they're both false, and it means that they were exposed, right? So if I wanted the exposed flowers, I, what I could do is I could say, take MIM data, filter it, and give me the, only the observations where both bagged is false and caged is also false. And so if I run that, what you'll get is just the exposed flowers. And you can see that if I look at exposed, in all cases, both bagged and caged says false, so they must be exposed. Now you might be wondering, okay, why is this not put in quotations like this one was? Well, it's because open is a character, right? These are letters, it means it's a word that means something. Whereas true and false are Booleans, right? So they're different types. So true and false are the only like words, quote unquote, that don't need to be put in quotations because they have a special meaning in R. Now, the last thing I want to show with filter is you can base, you can filter based on numeric types. So I showed you how to filter based on a character. I showed you how to filter based on a Boolean. And so now we're going to filter based on a number. So for example, if we only wanted data from 2012 and 2013, we could filter the data by saying, take MIM data, filter year, so the column year, anything that's less than 2014 and save it in this new data, data 12, 13. And if I had that, you can see that that data is just uh, observations from 2012 and 2013. I'm just going to keep scrolling through this. It doesn't look like there are actually any 2013 observations, so these are just all 2012. Um, the reason you might want to do this is remember we've got different data from different years, and so if you only wanted data from a year, for example, that we did Illumina sequencing, you wanted to compare, I don't know, what we called for that year for what we did with Illumina sequencing, um, you could do that by just filtering it this way. Now, the last thing I want to mention is what if we want to filter out NAs? So you'll notice that if you ha look at the data, there's a lot of columns that have a lot of NAs. And so if you want to get rid of NAs, you can use filter with the isNA function. So um, this, if it didn't have an exclamation point, it would just give me all of the NAs. But with the exclamation point, that means not. So exclamation is NA means give me everything that is not an NA. So I can use filter. I can use this is NA inside of filter to give me everything that is not an NA nectar pH. So in MIM data, for example, we've got nectar pH and we've got some NAs. So what I want is I want the data frame with all the rows that don't have NAs. So what I can do is do is NA nectar pH column then filter by that from the MIM data and save it as this new object, MIM data to pH. And so when I run that, I get MIM data to pH. Here we go. And you can see that these are all of the ones that have a pH that's not NA. All right, so that is everything that I wanted to show you about um, data wrangling. And next, I'm going to tell you a little bit about data visualization using ggplot2.